In this video, we're going to make a simple shop in Unity. We're going to have some currency and create the UI to be able to buy various items and weapons. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so this is our goal. Over here I have my player character just walking around. If I go down here, then some enemies get spawned and I can attack and kill them. And as I kill them, as you can see, I'm getting some gold, okay? And now up here we have a nice building. And as I approach the building, there you go, the shop interface shows up. And now here I can spend my hard-earned gold. So currently we have 85 and we have some items that we can purchase. So for example, I can buy this armor, so I click on it, and there you go, I have consumed some gold, and now I have a new armor. The way the armor changes is by modifying textures in runtime, and you can see how it's done in the modular sprite sheets video. So here I have my new armor, but the only thing I can afford now is the health potion. So as you can see, I currently have one, and I can consume it, and there you go, I've consumed it, and now I currently have zero. And if I click, there you go, now I have one, and I cannot click anymore, there you go, I cannot afford it. So I can't afford anything else, so now I can go down, spawn some more enemies, kill them, and get some more gold, and there you go. Alright, so I have killed a ton of enemies, now I have a whole bunch of gold. Now I go back into the shop, and now let's equip the new armor. So there you go, I bought it, and my gold went down, and buy the new sword and new helmet. And there it is, just like that. And again, when I cannot afford something, so for example, I cannot afford to buy this armor again, and you click and we have the nice tilt tip warning, which again was also made from scratch in a previous video. So here we have a very nice game loop. So I go down, I kill some enemies, the enemies drop some gold, and again, these pop-up items were also made in a previous video. So as I kill them, I got some nice gold icons, so that was made in the damage pop-up video. So I can get some gold, go back into the shop, and spend it to buy some items. Alright, so this is our goal. Let's get to it! Okay, here's our starting scene. I have my player character here walking around, and if I go down here, some enemies get spawned, and they attack me, and I can attack them. As I kill them, as you can see, I'm gaining some gold, and there you go, I got some gold. And if I go up here, there you go, I have my shop building. Okay, so let's make our shop UI. So here in our scene, let's go into the canvas, create an empty game object, call this the UI shop. Now inside, let's make a template for each item in our shop. So first we make a container to hold all of our templates. And inside, we create an empty game object. Call this our shop item template. And now here, just build it up. All right, so here is our template. So we have a image for our item, we have a text field for the item name, a text field for the item cost, and a simple gold icon. So we're going to build our shop dynamically in runtime by duplicating this template for all of our items. So let's make a script to handle our UI. So in here we make a new c -sharp script, call this our UI shop, and drag it into our UI shop, okay. All right, now in here, let's populate our store. Okay, so here for stars, we grab the reference to our container and then inside our container, we have the reference for our template and we start off with the template hidden. All right, so far so good. Now here in this project, I have this simple item class, as you can see, very simple. It just defines a bunch of item types, then a function to get the cost and a function to get the sprite. So the sprite is grabbed from the game assets class, which I covered in a previous video. Essentially here in the editor, there's a game object that contains the game asset script. And over here we have all of our asset reference. So in here you can see the armor, the helmet, the sword, and so on. So we can access this script. We access it through a static instance and then our items return that instance containing the reference for that sprite. Okay, so let's go into our shop, and here let's instantiate a bunch of items. So let's make a function to spawn a template with a given name, sprite, and price.
Okay, we have our function where we receive the item sprite, the item name, and the item cost. So in here, what we do is we duplicate our item template. Okay, so we instantiate our item template inside of our container. Then we grab the rec transform, and now we need to position it correctly. Okay, so here we have our function. We also receive a position index in order to locate it correctly. So all we do is modify the anchored position by a certain item height multiplied by the index. And then we simply set the item name and the cost text as well as the item image. Okay, so all we have to do is call this a bunch of times up here. So let's do it on our start. So we create an item button. Let's go into the item and call get sprite. Then let's say we start off with the first armor. So we get the sprite, then also get the name and so on. All right, so like this, we should be able to see our shop correctly populated with two armor types. Let's see. And yep, there's our two armor types displayed in our store. Right, awesome. Now let's fill it up with the rest of the items. And yep, here's our shop with all of our items. All right, great, so far so good. Now, right now, the shop isn't really doing anything, so if I click on anything, nothing happens. So let's sort that. For that, we modify our template. So in here, we go into our template, and to make this into a button, let's add the button UI script. So the button UI. This script is part of the CodeMonkey utilities, which you can grab for free from mntcodemonkey.com. This is a very basic script that already has a bunch of button behavior. Feel free to make your own button script or use the default unt1. Either way, it works. So here, back in the script, when we create our item button, let's also grab the button code. So get component of type button UI. And then we set the click function to be something. So over here, we have clicked on the item shop button. So here, let's make a function to buy this item type. So actually in here we receive all this, let's also receive the item type. Okay, so we have the item type and then when we click, let's call a function called try by item and pass in our item type. So let's make this one in here. Okay, so we have this function being called whenever we click on an item on the shop. So now here is where we need to answer some questions regarding code architecture. Now we could make this class interact directly with the player and give him the item directly. That would work, but then our code would become tightly coupled with a specific player class. So by clicking on that, we could, for example, call this function directly, which again would work, but would be tightly coupled with this specific instance of this player class. So this shop would not work with a different player class. So we want to make sure that this specific class is not directly used by our shop. So in order to keep those separate, we have a bunch of options. For example, we could use events to fire off when someone buys something from the shop, or another approach is to use an interface. So in this scenario, let's use the interface. So back in our editor, let's create a new c -sharp script, call this the iShop customer, and open it up. Okay, so now in here, first we define this as an interface and not a class. So in here we have public class, and now we're going to have a public interface. And normally all the interfaces start with name with i. So we have our iShop customer. And now here, if you're not familiar with interfaces, they are very simple. All we have to do is define the functions that this interface will implement. However, we do not include any implementation whatsoever. So in here we just add a void call it bot item and pass in the item dot item type. And that's it, this is all we put in an interface. So now on our shop, we can receive an object of this type. So up here, let's define a field for who is currently using the shop. So a I shop customer, let's call it shop customer. And now down here, when we have this function to try to buy an item, we can go into our shop customer and call bot item. And just like that, we have our shop working with the shop customer interface. The benefit of this is that the shop only cares that the object used here implements our shop customer interface. 
so it doesn't care about the rest of the customer object. All it cares is that it implements this interface, which implements these functions. So now we can make this specific player class implement that specific interface. So we have, we implement the iShop customer, and now we need to implement that interface. So there you go, we have our bot item function. And in here, let's just do a debug.log. Okay, so far so good. Now the last thing we need is to connect this player onto our shop. So we're going to make that connection when we also show the shop. So in here, let's make a public void, call it just show. And when we show the UI shop, let's pass in a I shop customer. All right, so when we show, we set our field for the shop customer, which we use in here, and we simply set the game object to active. And on hide, we set it to inactive. So for starters, let's start off hidden. So we create the buttons and then we hide our game object. Okay, we're almost done with this. Now let's see where we're going to call this function to show our shop. For that, let's go here back in the editor and let's create an empty game object. Let's call this the shop trigger area. And inside we add a box collider 2D. So there it is, make it a trigger. And let's stretch it out to occupy about that area, okay. So when the player enters this area, the shop will appear. When he exits, it will hide itself. So now let's make the script to handle this. So we make a new C sharp script, call this our shop trigger collider. And let's drag it in there, okay. Okay, so now inside this script, we just had the functions to handle our collisions. So we just make a on trigger enter 2D. So when a collider enters inside of this trigger, then let's try to grab a shop customer. So we try to grab a shop customer from the collider that collided with this trigger. And if it is not null, then that means that something that is a valid customer has entered inside of this trigger. So in here, we want to show the store. So all we need is a reference to our shop. So in here, let's add a serialized field for our UI shop. And then here we simply call show and we pass in this shop customer. So now let's do the same thing for hiding. Okay, so when we have the trigger exit, we hide our shop. All right, so now all that's left is to drag this reference. So here in the editor, we have our script with the field for our UI shop. So let's simply drag this reference right in there. All right, that's it. And again, remember we're working with triggers. So in here, make sure that the collider is set to trigger. Okay, let's test. Okay, so here we are. And as you can see, the shop starts off as hidden, but as I approach and there you go, the shop shows up. And if I leave and there you go, the shop hides itself. All right, awesome. So just like this, we have everything working. And again, we are not working directly with a specific player class, but rather with an implementation of a certain interface. So we could easily make this work with a player or with NPCs or with anything. Okay, so now let's handle the buy behavior. So over here is my console, so we can see. So for example, let's go in here and I'm going to click on the helmet. And there you go, we have our log saying we bought our helmet. So we have our shop correctly showing and hiding and we can now interact with the specific customer. Awesome. So again, we're using an interface to keep our shop nice and clean. And we're using a simple trigger to display the shop when a customer enters and we hide the shop when a customer exits. So as you can see, thanks to our interface, we could easily port this code into any game. We just need customers to implement the interface and everything works. All right, so let's continue. Now in order to spend some gold, let's go into our interface and add another function. So we're going to return a boolean and we're going to call this try spend gold amount. And we're going to receive an int for the gold amount. All right, so here we have a function where we're going to pass in a certain gold amount and it's going to return true if we can spend it and false if we cannot. So now we implement this into our player. So here's our shop customer and let's implement the rest of it. So here we have try to spend our gold amount. So all we do is very simple. Over here, the player already has a function to get the gold amount. So if the gold amount is bigger than our spend gold amount, then we can simply spend it. So we reduce our current gold amount by the spend gold amount. And then for the UI to work, we need to fire off the event. So over here, as you can see, a on gold amount change. So we simply fire off this event. So in here, we were able to spend it, so we return true. And if not, then we cannot afford to spend this much gold, so we return false. 
All right, so again, we have defined a new function in our interface and we implement it in our player. And now we can go into our shop script. And in here, when we try to buy an item, we don't buy it directly right away. But instead, first we go into the customer and we ask if he can spend this much gold amount. So go into the item and get the cost for this item type. So if we can't afford the cost, then finally we do buy the item. Okay, so just like this, the goal should be working. And now on the player, let's also handle what item we bought. So over here, all we're doing is doing a debug.log. But now let's actually use these functions in here in order to set our active item and armor. All right, so here we're just doing a switch on our item type and then calling the functions that I have prepared previously. So for example, in the equip armor, that's going to modify some pixels on the sprite sheet, which you can find out how it works on the modular sprite sheet series. So go check out those videos to see how those work and everything else is pretty simple. So let's test and we should be able to see spending our gold correctly and buying and equipping our items. Okay, so here we are. Now let's head to the store and there you go, the store showed up. Now let's see if we can afford anything. So I click and there you go, nothing actually happens. We currently have zero gold, so obviously we can't afford anything. So now let's leave the store and try to buy and kill some enemies. And there you go. So kill a bunch of them. There you go. Getting some gold, some gold. All right, great. We have some gold. Now let's go back into our shop. There it is. Now let's try to buy the first armor and let's see if the sprite changes and click. And there you go. We consume 30 gold and we equip our new armor. Now let's try buying a health potion and there you go. Now we have two. And if I consume one, there you go, consumed. Now another one. And now I have zero. And again, now there's no more gold. So I can go back down and see some more enemies and kill them more and get some more gold. And there you go, keep shooting them. Yep. Now I can go all the way up here and now I have some more gold. So now let's try to buy the helmet. And there you go, consumed 90 gold and I have equipped my helmet. All right, so just like this, we can spend our gold and buy some items. Awesome. Now, one simple thing is, for example, in here, we cannot afford anything, but if I click, there's no feedback to the player. So let's add a simple warning tooltip. Now here in my canvas, I have this tooltip warning object, which contains this script. This was fully made in Scratch in the tooltip series, so go check that out. Then here in our shop, we can reuse our tooltip warning in order to tell the player what's going on. So if we cannot afford it, then let's use the tooltip warning and call show and simply say cannot afford it. All right, that's it. So we should now be able to give some feedback to the player. So here we are with zero gold and we go up here and let's try to buy some armor. And there you go, we cannot afford a hundred gold. All right, awesome. So we have some nice feedback. And again, we made this whole thing completely from scratch in a previous video, so go check that out. And just like this, we already have pretty much our complete game loop. So we go out. Some enemies get spawned and we can attack and kill them. For every enemy we kill, we get some gold. Once we have captured some gold, we can go all the way up here and we can buy some new armor, some new health potions, then go down here, consume the health potions, kill some more enemies, get some more gold, buy some more items, and so on. And just like this, we have a very simple but working game loop with a working game store. And again, the whole thing is written in a pretty simple way using a very nice interface. So this would be extremely easy to apply to any type of game. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitygodmonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.